<laughs> the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with Love Is. thing you can be sure of during these next few days, friends and neighbors will be dropping in unexpectedly for visits to talk over holiday plans and parties. Will your home always be ready for them, floors gleaming with beauty, tabletops and woodwork spotless? If you practice protective housekeeping with genuine Johnson's Wax, it probably will be. Daily housework is reduced to a minimum when these surfaces are Johnson Waxed. Rooms are quickly tidied up. And properly waxed floors never really lose that richly polished look that good housekeepers so much admire. When you wax your floors, furniture, and woodwork, you not only protect them against scratches, dirt, and wear, you not only save yourself hours of work, but you also win the compliments and praise of your family and friends for the beauty that genuine Johnson's Wax adds to your entire home. When you consider the low cost of those advantages, is it any wonder so many good housekeepers just couldn't keep house without this famous wax polish? But don't be satisfied with anything but the original and genuine Johnson's Wax in paste, liquid, or cream wax form. This is the time of year when a man who can't suppress his curiosity should be handcuffed and blindfolded. For instance, a package came for the McGee's today, which is almost certainly a Christmas present. And we invite you to an interesting discussion between Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, but Molly, look, we don't know it's a Christmas present. Just the same, McGee. We're not going to open it before Christmas. Oh, but sweetheart... There's nothing on it that says don't open till Christmas. Don't get mushy with me. I still say we don't open it till Christmas morning. Now. Okay, okay, okay. I just wondered if it could have been them silver fox furs, that's all. I just wondered. Uh, what silver fox furs? Oh, never mind. We'll, we'll know Christmas morning. Well, I guess I'll run out the cigar store. And McGee! Huh? What silver fox furs? Who's sending me some furs? How should I know? Well, you're the most exasperated... <laughs> But this is exactly the size and shape of a box that would have a set of box furs in it. Hey, cut that out. You can't open that. Not till Christmas. But, darling... Don't get mushy with me. <laughs> you can't open it. Here, give me that package. You wouldn't let me open it, and I won't let you open it. Uh, why do you pay any attention to me? I'm just a woman. I don't know anything. <laughs> You're the man of the house, and what you say ought to go, dearie. Hand me the scissors. Here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh oh. Bad news, Molly. It ain't furs. What? It isn't? Mm. Oh, dear. I told you we shouldn't have opened that package, McGee. Not until Christmas. Uh -huh. But what is it? I don't know. Look. Oh. It's a musical instrument of some kind. Looks like a little pipe organ. There's electric wires on. Hey, I know. It's one of them chime doorbells, and a beauty, too. You mean one of those doorbells that every time it rings, you expect somebody to say, the following announcement is transcribed? <laughs> yeah, but it don't say here who sent it. Now, who do you suppose... Oh, get that stuff out of sight quick, McGee. Okay, okay. okay. Uh. Come in. Mr. Wilcox. Hello, folks. Oh, hi, Harlow. Come on in. No, thanks. I just wanted to leave these packages for you. And don't open them before Christmas. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wilcox. And we won't. But what's your hurry? I've got to stop and get a sandwich before I go back to the office. I missed my lunch. Well, Merry Christmas. Well, stop. heavenly days. Now, there's plenty of cold chicken in the refrigerator, Mr. Wilcox, and a lemon meringue pie. Oh, boy, my favorite vegetables. <laughs> but, gee, I hate to be any trouble, Molly. It's no trouble at all. It's no trouble at all. I'll just set out the chicken. Now, now, wait a minute. No, you don't. I'll find everything myself. Don't get up or I won't stay. Oh, well, well, go ahead, Wilcox, and easy on that pie. 
You gotta watch them hips <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll try to restrain myself Well, we know he didn't send that doorbell No, but I wonder who did Oh, oh dear, what? come in yeah, oh, right. how do you do, Mrs. Uffington? How do, oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Mr. McGee? And a yippee you tied to you, Mrs. Young. <laughs> Won't you slip out of your sables and squat a spell? <laughs> oh, thank you, no, Mr. McGee. I came over to ask a favor of you. Oh, certainly, Abigail. Anything we can do, just uh, ask us. Oh, yes. Unless you want me to take that pooch of yours for a walk. I draw the line at patrolling the precinct with that pie-eyed peak. <laughs> Mr. McGee, Fifi does not enter into this matter at all. Besides, I believe she entertains the same aversion to you that you do to her. <laughs> well, that's a lot of entertainment for one man and a dog. <laughs> but uh, what can we do for you, Abigail? Dean? Well, Mrs. McGee, I head the neighborhood committee to conserve waste paper for the government. I wish to ask you not to burn or destroy your waste paper and cardboard. Please save it, and I shall have a truck pick it up whenever you call. Why, sure. I'd be glad to help such a good cause. <laughs> Personally, I'd like to form a movie committee for this war. Uh, a movie committee, Miss McGee? Yeah, I'd like to get the government to make a documentary picture and send a million prints to Tokyo. Starring what actor, dearie? Harry Carey. <laughs> By the way, Uppy, did you by any chance send us an electric chime doorbell for Christmas? No. No, I did not, Mr. McGee. <laughs> but I must say I admire your blunt way of inquiring. I simply detest people who hint. I do too, Uppy. Although when I was a cup reporter years ago, I always, uh, I was always dip the diplomat. Oh, sure, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you betcha. <laughs> Sir, never used to ask a direct question if I could help it. But if there was any inside dope I wanted, I got it. Get that dope McGee, I was not asking him that. Oh, my. Get that dope McGee, the dashing, daring darling of the dailies and the ding-dong, dipsy-doodle daddy of the dirt dishers, diligently deviling dignified diplomats for delicate details, discreetly dictating data difficult to decipher, and deliberately denouncing dangerous demagogues dripping with dubious dialogue designed to develop defeatism, doing my duty with a dearth of dilly-dallying despite the dirty digs of the desperate dogs who determined to dampen my do-or-die disposition and deteriorate a diggity dynamo into a drippy droop, a dandy detective at dodging death and danger, but doesn't this description sound like a total stranger? Martha Tilton sings He's 1A in the Army and A1 in From my heart. Coast to coast in this great nation, each man has got a classification. Pray tell me, pray tell me, what's yours? I've got a guy. Who's really something This man of mine He ain't missing nothing No wonder I'm happy To say He's 1A In the army And he's A1 in my heart He's gone to help The country that helped him To get a start I love him so because I know he wants to do his part For he's 1A in the army and he's A1 in my heart And just in case you're quizzical, I'm gonna tell you now He passed the toughest physical, he passed it folks and how For I know why he rates so high on Uncle Sammy's chart Cause he's 1A in the army and he's A1 in in my heart. They're one A in the army, and they're A1 in our hearts. They've gone to help the country that helped them to get their start. We love them so because we know they want to do their part. Cause they're one A in the army And they're A1 in our hearts Hey, 
you, Molly, this is going to be a pretty snazzy doorbell, you know it? Yes, but who do we get to install it, dearie? An electrician? No, I can do it myself. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, please, let's not go into that again. What do you mean? I fixed the thermostat on the furnace last week, didn't I? It works at the touch of a finger now. Sure it does, sure. At the touch of a finger, you get a shock that melts your bobby pin. <laughs> Well, I'll get you some rubber gloves. <laughs> anyway, I don't see... Oh, dear. Come in. Oh, hi, sis. Hi, mister. What you doing? Huh? Hmm? What? I guess not. <laughs> you guess not what? I guess you didn't know I was a businesswoman, mister. Oh, businesswoman, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, just what branch of commercialism are you identified with, madam? Well, I... Hmm? <laughs> I says, what's your racket? Oh, a miserable toe Huh? Miserable toe I don't get it You don't unless you pay for it, I bet you Pay for what? Miserable toe <laughs> Well, that was a short ride, but I enjoyed it <laughs> Let's go around again <laughs> What's miserable toe? Oh, gee, mister, you know what miserable toe is. Oh. You hang it up on Christmas and it's got white berries on it. Oh, 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 sure, sure. 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 Mistletoe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Otherwise known as Mug Holly. <laughs> Lip Lilac. <laughs> and Night Blooming Smush. <laughs> My daddy calls it Fracture Cactus. <laughs> Fracture cactus. Why, sis? Because once a long time ago, he started to hang some up on the chandelier and the chair broke and he fell down and fractured his leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hmm? I says, oh. Oh. Well, mister, can we do any business? Only 25 cents a bunch. Okay, okay. Bring me two bits worth, sis. Oh, thank you, mister. I'll deliver it first thing tomorrow, and you can pay me the 35 cents. Fine, fine. I'll be... Hey, wait a minute. You says 25 cents. What's the extra dime for? Tax. What do you mean, tax? There's no tax on mistletoe. There is, unless you want to glue it up, mister. <laughs> little tyke. I'll bet she winds up selling Santa Claus a snood for his beard. <laughs> hey, Molly, do you suppose this doorbell runs on batteries or the regular house current or how? Well, uh, why don't you experiment, little dearie? You're a wonderful lad with electricity. <laughs> you really think so? Why, sure I do. Yeah. Who else could have wired the vacuum cleaner so it runs and hides under the Davenport every time I plug it in? <laughs> well, <stop>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 heavenly days. Oh, Something's happened to Mr. Wilcox. Come on, hey, McGee. Oh, 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 hey, what's the matter, Harlow? Hey, what you sitting on the stove for? Oh, oh, oh I've just glow-coated your linoleum. Yeah, oh. Huh? And I'm waiting for it to dry. Oh, oh, oh. I've only got 15 seconds to go. Oh, yeah. But you're sitting right on the pilot light, Mr. Wilcox. I know, but I don't want to jump down till the floor is dry. It takes, oh, it takes 17 to 20 minutes, oh, whoa, whoa, 20 minutes, oh, oh, time's up, oh, well, turn around quick, I'll throw some water on you, that's it, yeah. oh, oh, boy, that's better. Now, what was all this foolishness, Mr. Wilcox? I'm sorry, Molly, but when I came out here in the kitchen, I noticed your linoleum needed attention. Oh, I know, but I've been so busy shopping the last day or so that Oh, I... well, it wasn't bad, but I can't resist a linoleum that isn't perfect. So I grabbed a can of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and spread some around with a long handle of plier. It's really fun to do, you know. Oh, yeah, we heard you screaming with joy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the minute I had the floor all nicely glow-coated, and with no rubbing or buffing either... I hopped on the stove to let it dry, never realizing I was sitting on the pilot light. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for polishing my floor, Mr. Wilcox. And I'm sorry you had to roast your rompers doing it. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Molly. Well, I'll be getting back to the office now. And uh, did you have enough to eat, Harlow? Yeah, uh, eat. Yes, eat. Did you find the chicken and the pie? Well, what do you know? I forgot all about eating. The minute I got out here, I started glow-coating the floor. Oh, my. If I'm not the darndest fool. Oh, well, I'll grab a bite downtown. Thanks anyway, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you 
forgot to eat. I always said it, Molly, but I never really believed it. What? He'd rather talk about glow coat than eat. <laughs> well, I still hate to think about the... Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'd like to get paid by the door knock, McGee. <laughs> At a nickel a knuckle, I'd be rich in a week. Come in. Oh, hi, La Trivia. Good day, Mr. Mayor. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? Hello, McGee. I just dropped Excuse in... Excuse me to... just a minute, La Trivia. Hmm? Uh, look, did you send us an electric time doorbell for Christmas? I did not. I didn't send you anything for Christmas. You mean yet? McGee. <laughs> Except for my immediate family and employees, McGee, I am putting my Christmas budget into defense bonds and stamps. Good for you, Mr. Mayor. We've got to back up our buck privates with our private bucks. <laughs> Which is an old saying I just made up. <laughs> exactly. And now, McGee, you've been hounding me for a job with the city. Oh, right? I wouldn't say hounding you, Latrivia. Oh, I'll admit I've been kind of scratching around, wagging my tail, but... Well, uh... <laughs> Have you got something lined up for him, Mr. Mayor? I think so. Are we alone? Nobody here but us chickens, Latriv. <laughs> McGee, how are you on disguises? Heavenly days, detective work. How am I on disguises? <laughs> Funny you should ask that, Latrivia. Why, when I was a cinder dick for the old TSR railroad... Uh, what railroad was the TSR? The Topeka, Saugonash, and Rochester. <laughs> Better known to the passengers as the two streaks of rust. <laughs> when I was a detective on the TSR, La Trivia, I was known as the man with a thousand faces. You had your choice of a thousand faces and went back to your own? <laughs> Oh, tush. <laughs> I'll never forget the time I rounded up that gang of boxcar bandits around East St. Louis. I was walking along the right of way, slick as a cat, disguised as a jockey. Never mind the heroic details, McGee. <laughs> All I want to know is, can you assume a completely different identity and maintain it under trying circumstances for days at a time? Oh, why, certainly he can, Mr. Mayor. Why, he can even disguise his voice. Change your voice for the mayor, dearie. <laughs> Okay, I will. <laughs> no trouble at all. In <laughs> fact, I started changing my voice at the age of 14. <laughs> uh, uh, that's splendid, splendid. Uh, you report to the city hall first thing tomorrow, McGee. Oh, wonderful. You better get me a police permit. Uh, <clears throat> you better get me a police permit, Latrib, <laughs> so I can carry a gun. You won't need a gun. The disguise will be enough. You're going to be Wistful Vista's official Santa Claus in City Hall Park. Five dollars a day. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, man of a thousand faces, it looks like you're holding the bag again. Why, that double-crossing political parasite, who does he think I am? Santa Claus. I won't do it. I won't do it. He can't badger me into a beard and a bustle. No, sir. I... Now, here we go again. i got to hurry up and put this doorbell up. Yes, Molly. an ounce of prevention is worth ten pounds on the door. Yeah. Come in. Uh, Merry Christmas, Mrs. McGee. Hello, little child. Well, Merry Christmas! <laughs> hey. My, my. Heavenly days. How do you do, I'm sure. <laughs> well, come on in, Gildy old sock. I'm glad to see you. Look at him, Molly. Ain't he a sight? Yeah, what's that, McGee? I mean, <laughs> ain't he a sight for sore eyes? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> By George, it's nice to see you folks again. You're looking as lovely as usual, Mrs. McGee. Oh, now, Mr. Gildersleeve, stop your blind. Yeah, you see, Gildy, you got her so fussed she can't even pronounce baloney. <laughs> Here, Mr. Gildersleeve, take his hat and coat, McGee. Okay. I'll make a pot of tea. Yes, oh, take my hat and coat, McGee. <laughs> The King's Men sing What Do I Want for Christmas? Ding dong, ding dong, Christmas bells. I must make a wish for Christmas while their music swells. Ding dong, ding dong, all year through. If my wishes are auspicious, I'll be needing you. Oh, what do I want for Christmas? Do you really want me to tell? Well, I want you for Christmas Day and every other day as well. I never hang up my stocking beside the chimney flue. My cup is full to overflowing, long as I just have you. A toy balloon is something I'd never use. But joy in June is something I can't refuse. If you want to know what I want most, if you want to know what to do, just merely say, let's name the day, for I want you. 
Ding a dong, ding a dong, ding a dong, ding. Everyone is writing, telling Santa what to bring. Why don't I just write and say, Dear old Santa Claus, what do you want for Christmas? What do I want for Christmas? Oh, <laughs> who ever heard of such a thing? And yet, you know, I miss the things you all have here at other seasons of the year. Valentine's and Easter eggs and firecrackers on the 4th of July and Thanksgiving turkey and mincemeat pie. But all these things don't matter at all. If it makes you happy when I come to call, that's all I need the whole year through. That's the merriest Christmas to me from you. Oh, what do we want for Christmas? Do you really want us to say? We hope old Santa has a very merry, merry Christmas day. Let's hang up all our stockings and fill them full of cheer. So Santa Claus will have a happy round trip this year. We know you're awfully busy visiting everyone alike. But though you may get dizzy, visiting never go on strike. If you want to know why we're singing and feeling the way we do, it's just because old Santa Claus we all love. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir, Gildersleeve, you don't look a day older than when you left Wistful Vista. Oh, well. <laughs> Not that you were any chicken then, but... Yes. <laughs> Will you have another cup of tea, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, no, thank you. I should hope not. You've had six. Yes. <laughs> I have not. I've only had five, McGee. What do you mean, five? You had one at the coffee table, one while you were snooping through our Christmas cards, if... another oh, while Oh, now, I... McGee. Stop. Uh... He's welcome to all the tea he can drink. Uh, thank you, Mrs. McGee. My goodness. I never thought my little chum would ever begrudge Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve a miserable little cup of tea. What do you mean, a miserable tea? My wife makes the best tea in this... I house. didn't say the tea was miserable. You did, too. You said McGee. tea. I... McGee. He didn't mean that. He meant he was surprised you wouldn't want him to have all the tea he wants. Yes. Why, sure. He's welcome to all he wants, big ninny. But tea's pretty stimulating, Rocky, old man. And to a guy your age with your blood pressure, it might make you just a trifle... What? What are you talking about, my age? Why, I'm still on the sunny side of 40. Maybe, but you got no more use for suntan oil, boys. I wish you boys would stop this. It's so nice to have an old neighbor drop in on us. You hear that, Gildy? Old neighbor. Even Molly thinks. Never you're... mind what I think. <laughs> I never saw him looking better. Uh, Gonna be in town long, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, no, I've got to go to New York tomorrow, Mrs. McGee. Oh, hey, while you're in New York, Gildy, why don't you go see the picture we made together? You know, you and me and Molly and Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Oh, yes. Uh, look who's laughing. Uh -huh. And where is it play? Well, it has its uh, New York premiere tomorrow at the Palace Theater. And Keith Albee in Brooklyn. Oh. Yeah. So you better see it in Brooklyn, Gildy. You're one of them bums. You. <laughs> is that so? Uh, speaking of bums, McGee, that was a bum joke of yours sending me that old lawnmower the other day. Why, it was yours, Mr. Gildersleeve. Didn't you want it back? Well, I thought it was a big, expensive Christmas present. But before I opened it, I went out and bought McGee a very costly easy chair with a built-in radio and everything. <laughs> Gilly, I'm sorry. That, that lawnmower thing was just a gag. I, I, I sent you a real present yesterday. What? You did, McGee? Why, sure. I, I thought to myself, I thought to myself, I thought, if Gildersleeve ain't worth forty-seven fifty of my money... Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to let the price slip out. Yeah. Forty-seven fifty is none too much for Mr. Gildersleeve, McGee. Yeah. Not that the price of a gift makes any difference. Yeah, of course it doesn't. But I might have known that my little chum wouldn't do a thing like that. Yeah. Uh, Forty-seven fifty, eh? <laughs> well. Come in. Hey, is this the resident? Is this the resident? Is this the resident? Who lives here? <laughs> I do, bud. Trevor McGee. Oh, thanks. Here's a telegram. Here's a telegram. A telegram. It's a wire. Well, I'll sign for it, boy. There. Give the lad a quarter, dearie. Sorry, bud. I got nothing smaller than 35 cents. <laughs> you got a quarter, Gildy? Uh, no, I have it, little chum. Uh, sorry, sonny. Oh, that's all right, folks. I didn't really expect I didn't really expect I didn't expect I've been here before. <laughs> Hey, hey, it's from Racine, Wisconsin, from the Johnson Wax Company. Oh, my, what do they say? It says, Dear Fibber and Molly, 
We are sending you under separate cover an electric chime doorbell. Stop. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. We are so tired of hearing that eternal door knocking. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> So is everybody else. Stop. If every knock was a boost, you'd have a Crosley rating of 6,000. <laughs> Use the doorbell. Stop. Regards and Merry Christmas. Signed, Johnson's Wax. Well, that solves the mystery, McGee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure does, don't it? For a while there, I wondered... Hey, where are you going, Gildy, old man? Aren't you going to stay for dinner? Oh, please do, Mr. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, folks, but I've got to get back to Summerfield and then on to New York. Hey, huh? that's a wrong hat, McGee. I was wearing a fedora, not a beret. Oh, oh excuse me. That's the one I wear to fix the furnace in. Yes. Here you are, Gildy. Uh, thank you. Well, I certainly enjoyed this visit. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. And I'm so sorry you can't stay for dinner. Well, he couldn't eat any anyway, Molly. He's so full of tea, his eyes are beginning to slant. Yes. <laughs> Still the same old McGee, full of little smart cracks, he thinks. <laughs> well, I, I hope you enjoy your Christmas present, folks. I'm sure we will, Mr. Gildersleeve, and thank you very much. Yeah, and I hope you like the one I sent you, Gildy. I'm, I'm sorry I was so crude as to let the price slip off. Yeah, it's forty-seven fifty. Well, certainly nothing to be ashamed of. Wow. Well, goodbye, folks, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve, and the same to you. Go on, Crocky. I'm certainly glad we found out who the doorbell was from, Dave. <laughs> Me too. Hey, Molly. Yeah? What could I get Gildersleeve that would look like it cost around forty-seven fifty? <laughs> you know, there's one room that gets to be mighty important around the holiday season, and that's your kitchen. For two reasons. One, it gets more than the average amount of wear and tear. And two, when your friends drop in, they all seem sooner or later to find their way to the kitchen. Now, what's the number one thing to do to be ready for them? Right. Give your floor a protective beauty treatment. Make it sparkle and glisten with Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat. The floor polish that gives floors such a lasting luster, that makes linoleum wear indefinitely, keeps its colors as fresh and bright as new. Glow Coat is different from ordinary polishes. Its film is flexible, not brittle. It does not chip or wear down unevenly. It guards linoleum surfaces against wear and dirt. Makes house cleaning so easy because it needs no rubbing or buffing. Glow Coat is quick drying. You simply apply and let dry 20 minutes. And Glow Coat is economical because a little goes a long way. Now, if you're not already using Glow Coat, just try it once. Look for the familiar red and yellow can, and be sure it reads, Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat. You know, Molly, it was nice to see old Gildersleeve again. Well, nobody thinks so the way you two argued that. Oh, we were just kidding. I wouldn't really fight with him. <laughs> I should hope not. <laughs> He's a much bigger man than you are. <laughs> That's why it's so easy to get under his skin. He's got so much of it. <laughs> Good night and a Merry Christmas. Yes, and a Happy New Year, too. Good night, all. This is Marla Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. With automobile production again restricted, it's very important to take better care of your car. Don't let the finish deteriorate. Make it last. Keep it new looking with Johnson's Car New, the sensational auto polish that both cleans and wax polishes with one application. Two jobs in one, in less than half the time they used to take. For the sake of your car and for your own pleasure, buy a can of Johnson's Car New right away. It's spelled C-A-R-N-U. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.